right, so last day of notes, probably, in terms of anything that uh, would be considered new. This is only really somewhat new. Um, moving forward next week, we'll have our little, you know, test on Thursday of next week. That will wrap up pretty much everything that I'm going to be assigning the last week of the school year. We'll be left for any makeups or anybody looking to raise a grade by submitting old assignments, quizzes, whatever. Okay. So what you'll see at the top here is, is a rhombus. If you remember, again, we had that flow chart with different types of parallelograms and such. So we dealt with parallelograms a couple of days ago. We dealt with a rectangle, which is a version, a special type of a parallelogram. And then today is a rhombus, which is another special type of a parallelogram. So first and foremost, it has to be a parallelogram. So it's got to check those two conditions off that the opposite uh, this should be sides here. Opposite sides are congruent. And then the second one is opposite sides are parallel. In order to be a rhombus, not only does it need to satisfy those two, we don't just want the opposite sides to be congruent. We would need all sides to be congruent. And if it's a parallelogram and all sides are congruent, then we can say that it is a rhombus. So what I'm having you do here is basically determine if these are rhombuses or not. And it's kind of the same steps that we took with the rectangles. First thing is we need to make sure that it's a parallelogram, so opposite sides would need to be congruent for A, B, C, D. So we did that with the Pythagorean theorem. So if you remember, each tick mark is a 2. Figure out what is the length here. So do the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to go up to, so this little, let's do this in red. So this is a length of 2, and then we would go left 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So we're up to left 12. That would have to be the same length as what we're going to be doing down from B to C. So from B, I would go up 2, and then left 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. 12. So both of these then we create these nice little right triangles. Both of them we could use the Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus 12 squared equals your c squared. And when we solve these, and then we ultimately get 148 is equal to c squared, we get c to be 12.2. So we can then say a, b, or sorry, AD is congruent to BC. They are both 12.2 units long. The other two are pretty straightforward because they're vertical lines. So this is pretty much just us counting off. This is one, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So then we can say CD is congruent to AB because those are both equal to 12. Second tick, our opposite sides parallel. We pretty much have done the work for this one already because we can say we found AD and BC. If we revisit this, each of them went up 2, and then left 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Up 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 to the left. So both of these have slopes of up 2, left 12. CD, we know, is parallel. It's a D. Parallel to AB. We mentioned this the other day. If we just have vertical or horizontal lines, it's implied that those are parallel to each other. So we can just, for this one, say these are both vertical lines. So opposite sides are congruent. We show that here. We show that opposite sides are parallel. AD and BC have the same slope. And then CD and AB have the same slopes because they're vertical lines. In order to be a rhombus, then all sides need to be congruent. If you look up here at the top, we see that they are not. 12.2 is the side of one of the parallelograms, A, B, C, D. That is not equal to the length of the other two sides, which is 12. 
So since all sides are not congruent, we would say, no, this is not a rhombus. All right. <clears throat> if we do the same thing with number two, our opposite sides congruent. So our opposite sides, E, F, and H, G are opposite sides. So let's see if we do a little Pythagorean theorem with them, how that would work. So if I go from G to H, I go up 2, 4, 6, 8. And then I would go left, 1, 2. So now let's see if the same thing happens from E to F. I go up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then I go left, 2, 4. So if we do it with HG, so let's write down HG's slope. Again, we go up 8 and then left, 2, 4. If we do the slope of E to F, so here is E and F, I go up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then I go left, 2, 4. We can see pretty clearly here that while they might look like it in our graph, these are not going to be congruent. Oh, actually I'm doing the slopes, aren't I? So let's do that. Uh, we can kind of see right away those are not going to be parallel. <clears throat> so this obviously is not going to be a rhombus. Uh, if we wanted congruent, we'd be doing the Pythagorean theorem. So for this one here, we would have said 8 squared plus 4 squared. So this is 8, this was 4 is equal to our c squared. If we do f and e, we would have said 10 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. So we can see these are the same, but the 8 and the 10 obviously are not the same. So if we went through this and solved for c, this would be 64 plus 16, which is 80. If we took the square root of both sides, you're going to get a root 80. Over here, you get 100 plus 16. Add those together. Oops, one too many ones there. So 100, let me just erase that. So 116 equals c squared. Take the square root of both sides, and this is a square root of 116. So pretty clearly, those are not equal. We also see that our slopes are not going to be the same. So pretty clearly, this is not going to be a rhombus. So that's really the only new thing. It's not even that new. It's just you know providing some evidence here, knowing what three conditions we are looking for, whether it be um, a rhombus or a rectangle from the other day. And then from a couple of days ago, we did the parallelogram, making sure our opposite sides are parallel and our opposite sides are congruent. We see in both of these cases something fails so that we would say neither one of those would be a rhombus. All right, with that, I will wish you a good day and we'll talk to everybody next week.